and welcome back to everyone that's tuning in to the American Ultra Stock channel. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate all of you guys. Today, well, we would normally have the transfer updates video where we just review all of the rumors, all of the names getting thrown around there, but there's nothing really new. We've been talking about McKinney, Tessman, Johnny for weeks now, so we decided to do something a little different and play with a little bit of speculation. Well, there are some players we know in our player pool that must get a transfer this transfer window, and sadly, we haven't really seen much action from them. So today, straight to the point, Braden, starting with the one name that everybody knows knows that needs a move some are entertaining the thought of him trying his luck at Dortmund with a new manager but Gio Reyna needs a move and we haven't seen anything your thoughts on it and do you think he will get a move yeah so just to confirm real quickly if any of you guys didn't understand that we're only focusing on the players that don't have any rumors right now we know that there's a lot of players that do need a move but we've talked about them in the past several videos so instead of just being repetitive and talking about the same thing over and over again we wanted to do a little, a little something different for you guys so for Gio I think it's pretty clear that he needs a move maybe the new manager Nuri Sahin will give him a little bit more faith I think it's worth at least seeing how he does in their pretty short preseason in Asia he is with the first team for that so He'll probably play in, I think, one or two friendlies there. We'll see how he does. We'll see if he's an important player for them there. But preseason doesn't really mean much in the grand scheme of things. I'm just not confident in him keeping a solid role at Dortmund. I think it's better for his career to play it safe and start fresh somewhere because he's had a lot of injury turmoil in the, his career at Dortmund and a lot of problems with the past manager Terzic as well. I think Syria seems to be a place that I would like to see him go. It's just a matter of finding a team that needs a number 10 that is willing to pay whatever wages he's he wants because it realistically I think it would be great to see him go to a smaller club like a mid-table side somewhere where he can get regular minutes but the fact of the matter is he's coming from Dortmund. His wages are going to be too expensive for a club of that stature so it's going to have to be a, a bigger club of some sort whether that move actually materializes, I don't know. We've seen in the past, or I guess this window with McKenney, his wage demands are providing a lot of complications, even Tessman's as well. But hopefully the same thing doesn't happen for Gio. I think his agent, Jorge Mendez, really needs to get this one right because he couldn't have done any worse with the Nottingham Forest loan. Anywhere where he can just get minutes, even if it's not in the top five league, you know, even if he goes to one of the top teams in Eredivisie, Liga Portugal, one of those clubs, I think, is still fine, just as long as he's in a comfortable environment where he can just play. Because I think we know that if he is on the pitch, we, we have all seen his quality for the USMNT. He just needs to be playing in his preferred position for a solid team that's going to give him the right opportunities, the right chances to prove himself. I just don't think Dortmund is that right now. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that it's Gio at Dortmund for me. I'll make a comparison here. It will be a little bit harsh, but it's kind of like Des at Barcelona. It's just that dream that won't really happen. I think that he can try to keep on hitting on that key and try to stay at Dortmund, but I just don't see how he will just be able to be a regular player and get the minutes that he needs at this stage of his career. He's still very young and we say, oh, he has a really high ceiling, but you need to develop that ceiling. You need to develop as a player. And I don't think you'll have that opportunity at Dortmund. He's always going to be a rotational player. I would really like to see him become a, a regular player for someone. I think that Jorge Mendes has a lot of pull and you know, a lot of uh, pull in Portugal. So if he goes to a Porto or Benfica, I think that it would be ideal. Uh, it's a good league, not too physical as well, very technical. And we've seen good exports from that league as well. A little bit underrated by some people, but I think it would just be just right for Gio or Italy, Spain, these leagues that I think Spain would be uh, the best one in terms of suiting to his play style. But we haven't really seen anything. So hopefully we do get some rumors uh, going, but not only a rumor, but we get a move for Gio because uh, I think that if he tries to stay at Dortmund, it's just uh, throwing away a bit of valuable time at this stage of his career. Now, we're going to move on to a guy that doesn't have that much more time in his career. Well, he's still young for a goalkeeper, but Matt Turner, I think that it's clear that for the Forest move in hindsight, it's crazy. At this point last year, we were all happy with it, thinking, wow, it's so much ambition. He's going to be a starter at the Prem. Everything went spiraling down. Even his national team career, barred that one game against Brazil, has been up for doubts now with the fan base. So 
he was spotted at a game at the uh, New England Revolution. Do you think that he could be on his way back, Braden? Do you think that he will get a move or he stays as a cup goalkeeper in England? I'm truly not sure just because there's been complete radio silence. He did play in a friendly for Nottingham Forest. I, I think yesterday it was. Uh, he played in the second half at least, but let's face it. They have four goalkeepers at the club. None of them are good. It's, they tried. They keep trying to buy a new one every window. We saw even when Turner was brought in, they brought in Vlakodimos as well. Neither of them worked. They had to bring in uh, Matzels, the Belgian goalkeeper, in January. He didn't work. Now they're trying to bring in someone from Brazil who, let's face it, also isn't that good. He's kind of just carried by his physical frame. He's very, very tall. But in terms of his ability and Premier League potential, I, I just don't see it. I still think it's the best opportunity for him to leave. He's not going to get any minutes at Forest, and it's a club that probably could go down next season. I think they're going to be in a relegation battle again, unless they can severely strengthen their squad. The window is still open, so who knows? But I think going to the championship, or honestly, just come home to MLS, be safe. I don't think we have a need for Matt Turner to be in the national team pool anymore. If I was the new manager, whoever that may be, I would just drop him permanently. May, I may be calling up to the Gold Cup, but then again, the Gold Cup is now the only remaining competitive tournament or competitive games at all that we have before the World Cup. So in theory, we should be bringing an A-team to that tournament despite not doing that in the past. I don't see the need for Turner to be in the national team at all. Maybe if you want to keep him on as a backup just to serve as some leadership to guide the young guys. But even then, honestly, I don't back his leadership. He clearly has no problem with mediocrity in terms of his form at club and with the national team. I mean, he was the one, the first one to come out and say it, that he saw no problem with the direction the national team was going when after we got knocked out of the Copa America in the group stage, I'm sure he was devastated to see his best friend Greg Berhalter get fired because it probably means, hopefully, his time with the USMNT is up. I hope he just goes back to MLS and gets forgotten about. Maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh, but I don't rate the guy at all. I never have rated the guy. He had a couple of good performances for the national team that saved him a little bit. But let's face it, anytime he's faced real competition at any level, he's faltered. So back to MLS you go. Yeah, some people may think it's harsh, but guys, as Braden said, the standards, not being okay with mediocrity, I think that we need to raise the standards altogether in the program. And like you said, I'm okay with him being a third string goalkeeper where his leadership won't be really too vocal. It's just with the goalkeepers. He's been there, one or not. He has. Uh, he's the only one now in the pool that will be able to say, hey, I played a World Cup match. I don't know what's that you know, that's good for because I always say experience is only good if it's good experience uh, or some bad experience that you built upon. I don't think that there is anything for him to show and back up the claim that he can be a valuable asset to the squad. I would like to think that the next manager will start that transition period moving on to another goalkeeper i think that an mls move is imminent for him if he tries to stay around in england it's just going to be he's going to be a backup goalkeeper and like you said carlos miguel gets carried by the height but i think that the Braz the fact that he's brazilian they have spent uh, quite a lot for a goalkeeper his age they might give him some chances and i think that overall the club doesn't really trust turner so he needs to move asap Staying in England now to a guy that may go abroad. Some people really want him to test his waters again at the Bundesliga. You see on Braden's background is Josh Sargent. The guy has basically completed championship. I know he didn't get promoted, but I feel like he, if he was fit, he would have been the top goal scorer for sure. Played really well there. Just a little bit of a problem with the injuries that may hinder his ability to get a transfer. Do you see it happening, Braden? And where to? Where would you like to see him go? Well, this is actually, I think, the only one on our list here that I don't think needs a transfer. And it's because of what you just mentioned. It's the injury problems. I would rather see him stay with Norwich in the championship, hopefully remain healthy for the entire season and challenge for the Golden Boot, which he would have done last season. If you look at his form uh, and his, his goals per 90, it was incredible. One of the best the league's ever seen. And if he can stay healthy and continue to do that this season, not only will he challenge for the Golden Boot and put himself in a prime position to get a, a marquee transfer to a Premier League club, to a Bundesliga club next summer, but he'll also probably help Norwich maybe even fight for promotion. And if he can do that, maybe he doesn't even need a move because then he can be in the Prem with Norwich. That's still 
probably a, an unrealistic outcome just due to the quality of some of the other teams in the championship. But I, I think I'm just a little bit concerned by the physicality in some of the other leagues. The championship is a very physical league within its own right, but I think it just gets progressively more physical as you go up levels. The Premier League is the best of the best. I'm just a little bit concerned about his injury history, especially this past season. It seems like every time he's with the national team, he just makes it worse. And I truly think he may have been rushed back from his initial injury a little bit too soon. Luckily, it hasn't had as big of an effect as, the, as it did for Tyler Adams when he was rushed back too soon. But who knows, if he keeps playing when he's not fully healthy, it might. So if he can just rest, he shouldn't have been at Copa America. He should have been resting. And we're seeing the same thing for Tyler Adams now as well. I mean, if you've seen the news that came out that he's going to miss the start of the season for Bournemouth, just so disappointing from that aspect. But if he had sat the whole summer, gotten back to 100% health, he would have been fit and firing. But I think it's better to just remain safe and try to truly get yourself back in the best form of your life and then make the marquee move next summer. Then you can have one full season at the highest level to prove yourself and prove why you should be in the squad for the 2026 World Cup. Yeah, I I will say I want him to move. I see the reasoning for him to stay. I just think that he's not on that high of wages. So I think that he should just get up on a level. But I think that the trajectory, if he was to stay and hey, if someone tells me it's a guarantee they'll go up or fight for promotion to the very least and he will get a transfer next year, I think it's fine. But I'm not too sure. The championship is so tough to predict. And I think that it would overall, he has the numbers to back up a move somewhere else. Maybe not the Prem, but if maybe Bundesliga, I feel like Sargent could be firing that. And, uh, well, Pepe doesn't look like he'll get a move. So the minutes will be there for him to prove to be the immediate backup to Balogun. So I think that maybe he does need a move. But the injuries definitely are a cause of concern and will probably stand in the way of a transfer. Now, we mentioned uh, a backup or a goalkeeper, some vacant spots right there that are open in the squad. Well, the center back position is completely up for grabs. I think we saw even Chris Richards wasn't that all that good, really, this summer. he I think that he's a bit of a lock in that position. But uh, the post ring era starts now and we need someone to step up. This guy, Mark McKenzie, got called up for the Copa America. Didn't get any minutes. Kind of understandably so. I didn't really expect him to get any minutes. Uh, I'll be honest. I would have liked to see him get some, but he didn't. And now it seems like he may be on the move. Uh, he got rumored a while back during the season to West Ham. Do you think that McKenzie is the answer for that center back position? Could he be? And do you think he will get a move ultimately? I think it is time for him to get away from Belgium. He has done really well there. Probably earned a move somewhere else based on the interest. I will say I didn't initially expect McKenzie to get any minutes in Copa America just because he was the fifth center back called. There's no secret that Burhalter had his group of four. But the fact that uh, even if uh, I saw it coming, the fact that CCV got minutes over this guy is criminal. Just one of the biggest mistakes I've seen in managers decisions ever. But in the grand scheme of things, it is what it is. We have to move on. I think McKenzie is one of the prime candidates, at least for now, to take over that spot. Hopefully in a few years time, we have some up and coming young prospects such as Noah Kai Banks, Matai Akamboni, you know, Pierre players like this who can step up and, and boost our center back pool a little bit because even the options that we have to take over from Reem, like McKenzie, like Trusty, like maybe Miles Robinson, they're just not great, really. I mean, they're solid, they're better than Reem would be uh, in the future, and they're better than CCV, but that's not really a high bar. So I, I think that McKenzie does need to get a move. He's, he's approaching a, a bit of a dangerous CCV-like situation where if he stays too long at Gank, he could just become... Uh, a club legend there, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'd rather him be there than at Celtic at the end of the day. But I think it's time for him to step up. He's proved himself in Belgium. He even was the captain for their last game of last season. I think that's a clear, as clear a sign of any that he is looking to move on this summer. Maybe they're looking to get a, a sizable transfer fee from him. The biggest transfer fee you're going to get is from the Premier League or maybe a high level championship club, which he did have a lot of links to in the January window. Like you said, West Ham was one. There were some other lower tier Premier League clubs. Leeds in the championship were very interested as well. I think if he can go to one of these teams, even if it's not in the Prem, even if it's a Leeds level club who are going to be fighting for promotion and probably winning it, 
I think that's still a, a better opportunity and it's a new challenge for him as opposed to just staying with Genk, finishing fifth or sixth in the Belgian league every year. The, first, uh, the year before this past season, he fought for the title. That was good, but I can't see that happening for the foreseeable future at the club. It's time to move on. The only rumor he's had this current window, and it came a while ago, was to Trabzon Sport in Turkey. And I feel like that's just a sideways move at best. I mean, if you're going from one of these secondary tier European leagues to another one, maybe there's a little bit more of a, a play in terms of a, a higher level within Europe. They're going to be in the Europa League. But I just I think it makes more sense to go and challenge yourself in a top five league. I think his game suits the Premier League very well. He's very athletic as we see with a lot of American players. He's fast, strong, built well to be a Premier League center back. And even if it doesn't work out, I think it's the, for the better that he tries it. Austin Trusty tried it. He didn't have the best of seasons, but at least we know now a concrete example of what his level is, as opposed to, I'll keep going back to it, and I don't care if I'm sounding too harsh, someone like CCB who challenges himself nowhere. And we finally, we don't know his true level until it's too late at the national team. So I think McKenzie needs a move to a bigger club somewhere in the Prem, even if it's a team like Sheffield United last season that's probably a favorite to go down, just somewhere we can go play against the best in the world and truly challenge himself and find his level. Yeah, I think at his age, really, players at that age, if they really haven't had the breakthrough, well, the breakthrough in terms of getting in the public eye and being in the mainstream, uh, in the most, uh, in the best leagues, really, it's okay if they go there and fail at the Premier League, kind of like Trusty did, because then you had the opportunity to improve as a player and build upon that, especially in the position he's playing, he should have a long career, so I'm okay with him going there, having a better a relegation scrap. Definitely don't want a Trusty 2.0 because, well, they were horrible. But I don't think that's going to happen again. And I think that he just needs a move. I would be a, a very upset if he ends up staying in Belgium. I, I know it's a respectable level. But honestly, if he wants to break through to be that next guy to be starting, intending to start with the national team, he has to be playing at a higher level. So I hope that he moves. But it's still early in the summer. I think that uh, these transfers, if, if you're not moving to a huge club, it's not really that bad of a miss to miss the preseason. So hopefully he gets something towards the end of the, of the window. There should be some rumors until then. And talking about uh, guys that will be playing during the summer, it's Gaga's Lenin who was surprisingly released. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, at some point I thought he wasn't going to be released to the Olympics, but he made the roster. Doesn't look like he'll be the starter, really, based on the numbers. Uh, it seems like he'll be Patrick Schulte, but Zlanina, regardless, I would like to see him start somewhere this season. Is he going to be a part of the lone army again? I'm all up for it. I would rather watch him do that than be an academy player. You've been advocating a move to Strasbourg. Do you think there are any other destinations he might find himself in? And do you think he will get that move, Brayden? You said it uh, yourself. I've been on the Strasbourg hype train for Sonina since January. Since they did sell, I mean, we mentioned him earlier in the video, Matt Sells to Nottingham Forest. He wasn't a goalkeeper, good goalkeeper in the first place. They haven't truly replaced him yet. And it just makes so much sense. I mean, Chelsea have signed half the world at this point. You have to imagine that most of them, uh, especially the younger guys, are going to be for Strasbourg this season. We've seen it happen already with Caleb Wiley. They signed him. He's going to be at Strasbourg. He's also an Olympian. So I think having him uh, be with Slonina, they have so much experience together at the na youth national team level. Having them play together for club, it, it's the perfect opportunity to have a teammate, get acclimated to a new league, and just be comfortable at, at a, a high level. Because we saw last year with Oipen, the Belgian Pro League is a respectable level, like you said, but when you're at a club like Oipen, who have the worst defense in the league, and we're just shipping goals and shots every single minute of every match, it seems, it's just not that beneficial. It's good for one season like that to get reps in so you can truly perfect your craft in terms of saving but i think he needs to go somewhere a bit better so he can truly challenge himself fight for something because i think orpin were locked in to get relegated basically the whole season he can go to strasbourg they were in a relegation fight the last two seasons but i, I expect them to be a little bit better maybe they'll push for a mid table who knows even if they make the right signings and bring in the right players from chelsea maybe they could even push for europe so I think it's the perfect opportunity and environment for him to go to and especially work on his distribution because I think we still don't have a keeper who's really good at distribution. Diego Cochin would probably be the only one just because he's coming up through La Marsella, the Barcelona school of thought. Everyone has to be 
perfect passing the ball, but he's still so young. He's still a backup there, probably going to be playing for their B team. He's nowhere near ready. Slonina is more of a proven thing in terms of the future of our USMNT goalkeeper position. And if he can go somewhere like Strasbourg, truly challenge himself at a pretty high level, and then who knows, maybe he'll even be ready for Chelsea after that. Probably not, given the fact that they seem to buy an entire new team every transfer window. I think they'd forget he exists. But even if it's not Chelsea, even if it's a permanent move to somewhere else in the Prem, somewhere in the Serie A, La Liga, Bundesliga, anywhere he can go in the top five leagues for there, I think Strasbourg is the perfect stepping stone this season for him to go. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I really don't want him to, I don't want to watch him play Academy U23s, whatever the Premier League reserves thing is. I think he needs to get minutes. And again, we need someone to step up in the goalkeeping position. A lot of people would look, turn their eyes and look at Lanina as the future. But let's be honest, last season wasn't all that great. I, I think that he hasn't really improved by any means in terms of the, the biggest problems he has with this game the distribution i think is just as bad claiming crosses at times is just as bad so i don't really think for uh, the experience is good but in terms of developing i don't think it was the best place for him to be it's not very suitable for you to develop as a goalkeeper in the worst team in the league so hopefully he moves to strasbourg that would be a great move or even if he gets a loan to a low level championship club i would be okay with that as well uh even maybe league one i would be okay the with the english third tier because i think he needs to be playing at a place where it's hey it's okay you guys are not going to get relegated if you do your job it might be tough but just get the minutes in there develop as a goalkeeper because well we need someone to step up drastically right away asap so let us know in the comments below what you think about these names do you think they will get a move where would you like to see them and by the way like Braden said in the beginning a disclaimer we know McKinney needs a transfer but he has a lot of rumors we'll be keep on talking to him about him for quite a few weeks so just let us know in the comments below where you want to see these players move and if we missed any of the big names that might need a move and that you want to see get a move somewhere else this summer make sure to leave a like subscribe share with your friends and we'll see you next time